aus. Okay? So this morning I just want to continue with the, uh, the message that I started preaching a few weeks ago. It's called The Greatest of These is Love. And it's, uh, it's, it's a message that, uh, again, I repeat myself, but just to let you know that uh, the Lord downloaded this message in me quite a while back. And it has to do with how we uh, hunger for being used by God a lot. And, uh, and then the Lord starts to show me, Lord, we, we, we all want to be used by the Lord and use our gifts and all that. But there's a way of doing that. And so the Lord started to show me that, you know, you, you know uh, you're probably familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, right? Which Paul talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And he goes in details about the nine gifts of the Spirit and how they flow. And then at the end of that, just, just before that, he says, I'll show you a better way. And it's the way of love. And from then on, <clears throat> now it's months ago, and from then on, the Lord started to download in me what love is. And so uh, I spent, uh, the first part one was on the character of God, and God is love, and uh, uh, what is love, and God expects love. And then the last one I said, uh, I shared with you guys, is uh, I went with the, the first one. And the first one is patient. And I share with you on the last sermon, I share with you what, what being patient is by applying love. Okay, so I'm not going to go in details with that. But I just want to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, if you want to follow me. And I'm reading for the New King James Version. It says there, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanding cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and though I have all the faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but not, I have not love, it profits me nothing. Then it goes in details what love is, and I want to go in detail with that with you this morning. Love suffers long, or love is patient, in some version says, and it's kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoke, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Amen. Today I want to touch on the second one. There's 14 aspects of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And, uh, this is a teaching that's going to be very long, I told you. And uh, it goes really down deep in a human heart. You know, sometimes we take it for, example, uh, for granted what Paul was trying to say. But when you finally analyze every little bit of word that he meant, it actually means a lot. See, G uh, see God did not, through, through Paul, did not share that just to say, well, it looks good. A lot of people, they'll use this scripture in, uh, for the wedding. But this scripture has a lot to do with the internal aspect of a human life and how to use love in all kinds of situations. And I'm talking about, about a born-again believer because, like I said, uh, only born-again believers can actually literally apply the love that Paul speaks about here. So today I want to speak about the love of God I thought I was at the proper place there <laughs> on the kind love is kind 
In Webster's Dictionary, it says, first of all, I'd like to pray. Sorry. My wife would say, dear, you forgot to pray. <laughs> and it's true. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you just help me to deliver this message to whoever is willing to listen. Lord, this message goes down deep in human hearts. And Lord, I believe that every message is created, Lord, to change us from inside out, to be able to become more and more mature in Christ. And I pray, Lord, that everyone here today and every listening, or every person listening online <coughs> will abide and really hear what the Spirit is saying, Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you will go down deep in our human heart and you will expose everything that needs to be exposed so that we can walk in faith and walk in love, Lord, and be kind more to people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> in Webster's Dictionary, the, the word kind means disposes to do good to others and to make them happy by granting them requests, supplying their wants, or assisting them in distress. Having tenderness or goodness of nature, benevolent or benignant. Kindness is an act of goodness going forth in the interests of others. You know, I just talked about going on the mission field and one of the key things about being a missionary is really to be kind. And this is what it's explaining here, to be kind. Being kind is actually the nature of God. In Luke chapter 6, verse 35, it says, But love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your, <coughs> sorry, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the unthankful and the evil. We cannot apply to God kind of kindness without being born again and without yielding to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> it says in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are His creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared ahead of time, so that we walk in them. So as a believer, to be kind, we are called by God Himself to do good works. And to do good works, it comes out of a heart to be kind to people, to put others first. There are many kind people in the world today that have eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but they will never measure up to the kindness of a redeemed individual. Never. Never. Many, many good people, I know many of them, they're good. They, they, and some, as a matter of fact, think that they're winning brownie points in heaven They've never given their life to the Lord, and they think that they're just buying their way to heaven, and that because of their good works, they'll make it. But no, it's not that. Because the thing is, you have to be born again. You have to be a born-again believer to be able to, to do what God really wants you to do. It comes from the character and love of God inside a human heart. There's many people that do good things in the world today, but they will never, 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 never measure up to a true believer, yielded to the Holy Spirit. Because a, a believer from the Holy Spirit, a believer filled with the Holy Spirit, will actually partake of the tree of, uh, not the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but from the tree of life, which is Jesus himself. Amen? So out of your belly, out of your being, you become a kind person because of who Jesus is inside of you. Right? Before that, you might have done some good things, but you did not have the Spirit of God inside. So the unredeemed do it for selfish motives, where, where some do it to earn brownie points from God and others because it makes them feel good and look good to others. Right? But the redeemed do it because they love God, which in turn causes them to love others as themselves. Dutch... That's, it's the same thing that Jesus says. You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. And you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Which is work of kindness, right? But it comes out following the word of God through the spirit of God. Amen. Kindness takes the ish, initiative in responding generous to others' needs. Because believers have received kindness, they ought to act with kindness towards others. Such love is considerate and helpful to others. 
Kind love is gentle, mild, always ready to show compassion and especially to those in need. Again, I emphasize that missionaries all over the world, under the onset of the Holy Spirit, they are actually applying this. They're applying what Paul says, you know, love is kind. In Galatians 6.10 it says, Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So Paul gives all kinds of commandments. Uh, how we are commanded to be kind. In Luke 6, 27, Jesus speaking, But I say to you who here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. So a kind person will, will do the extreme, even to their enemies. In 1 Timothy 6.18, it says, Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. So a kind person is always willing to give, financially or whatever. In Hebrews 13.16, it says, But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. So being kind is actually a sacrifice unto God. You give yourself to God. You give yourself to people. In 1 Peter 2.20, it says, For what credit is it if you are beaten for your faults? You take it patiently. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. So God actually literally looks at it as an awesome sacrifice when we are accused and we're kind to people that are unkind with us and whatever we we just fight back with love when we fight back with love god takes it as an offering he takes it as something commendable it says here in james 4 17 it says therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it to him it is sin our society confuses love and lust. Unlike lust, God's kind of love is directed outward towards other and not inward towards ourself. Amen? Big difference. It is that type of love, that type of uh, kindness is unselfish. And this type of love or this type of kindness goes against the grain of society as a whole. And we can literally see that all over. Many people will do good things for people, but if there's not money tied to it, or whatever, whatever, the benefits they can have out of it, they won't do it, right? They, they do it for sure, whatever. But a, a believer will do it because they love God. They love God and they love people. Amen? And so Paul, through his letter, he expects uh, a person to uh, be kind, a believer to be kind. It is impossible to have this love unless God helps us in <coughs> set, set aside our own natural desires so that we can love and not expect anything else in return. And this actually is like when we start becoming more like Christ. See, the whole intent of Jesus saving us is to becoming more and more like God himself. In character and in love, right? In character. To touch the world for him you know i believe with all my heart you know even jesus before he left he did the spirit that they may be one as we are one that you love one another he said god expects his people to be so pure of love so be able to be kind to any person on the earth and i'm telling you it's hard to be kind to every person the only way we can literally do that is when we tap into god himself to his spirit because only his love only him can give us the ability to be able to love the unlovable to be kind to that person amen so kindness i put it here kindness kindness wishes well kindness is courteous kindness is gentle tender and affectionate kindness always desires somebody else's happiness so he will not bring wrong feelings Kindness is to always be polite. Many, many um, different facets of being kind. There's all kinds of facets. Kindness attracts people. <clears throat> uh, many 
people that walk with kindness are people they attract people people are attracted to them because they are willing to give everything right I don't know if you ever been attracted to kind people but I have and I mean it seems that they, they, they want to give away the moon <laughs> It's because they have, uh, I'm talking about believers, it's because they have God inside and they love people. Kindness can be found in the hearts of most missionaries. In Proverbs 31, 20, it says, She extends her hand to the poor, yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. This is really speaking about a wife, a good wife, but also you can, you can actually, we are married to Jesus, right? And so because we're married to Jesus, we are the wife of Jesus, and so we care for people. Amen? In Romans 12.10, it says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. A kind person always puts others first. Examples of bio, uh, uh, kindness in the Bible in Acts chapter 11 verse 29 Then the disciples each according to his ability determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea So works of kindness is just like you know you guys are doing even now Believers got together and sent money to help others in need just like you guys are doing That's an act of kindness just like they did it in the New Testament when the first church started, they saw a need with other churches, they would gather funds, and they would send the funds to help brothers or sisters in need in other churches. Well, that's an act of kindness. This is what God expects us to do. In, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13, it says, Therefore we have been comforted in your comfort, and we rejoice exceedingly more for the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. Another act of kindness is when believers see somebody suffering, and they will go around them and encourage them and bless them and pray for them. That's all included in what Paul was trying to say in 1 Corinthians, it's an act of kindness. Love is kind. When you see somebody, a fellow brother or sister, they're having a hard time, you go around them and you hug them and see, I'm, I'm praying for you, I'm there for you, I'm, you know, we're there for you. And that's, that's what here it says. Christians driven by kindness will do everything possible to bring comfort to others just like the Christian church did. They, 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 they probably encouraged them financially, but also with words of encouragement. Amen. That's why Jesus created the church. That's why we, it's important to meet together. When one suffer, we all suffer. When one's happy, we all happy, right? And that's what it is. It's so important. And acts of kindness will bring people together like that. And we will comfort one another. Amen. So that's another act of kindness that sometimes we don't pay attention to it. But it's very important in the body of Christ. Because, you know, I might have a, a victory in my life, but somebody else is not having a victory. Mm -hmm. It needs my encouragement, or she needs my encouragement, right? <clears throat> another hack of kindness in Romans 15, 7, it says, Therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Kind people open their homes to those in need. Mm -hmm. That's what a kind person does. See somebody that uh, needs a, a place to sleep overnight, or I know many of you, you've done that many times in your, in your walk with God through the years, right? So we invite strangers in. We don't, don't, we don't really know them, but they need somebody. So that's an act of kindness also. It's when we just see a need and we can help, maybe bring somebody to the restaurant where they need food or they need encouragement, just sitting at the table and having a coffee with them. Acts of kindness. You sit there and you're there for them. And they're there for you. Right? So that's another act of kindness. An act of kindness where you open your home to other people. That sometimes strangers. It says in the word, it says, do not deny yourself of entertaining strangers. Right? 
Because you never know, you might even entertain an angel, it says in the Word of God. So acts of kindness are so important for God. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 30, is 2, it says, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So kind people are always ready to forgive. Always ready to say just to, 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 to not doubt the benefits, to, to really believe if somebody says they, 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 they repent or they, they ask forgiveness, you forgive them, you just hug them, you are kind to them, you, you believe what they're saying, right? A kind person is always ready to forgive, already, always ready to, to overlook a matter, overlook whatever happened, and let's move on, right? Well, a kind person will do that. They will overlook a matter. They will just be, that's it, it's settled. I'm not going to remember that, that whatever happened between us anymore. <clears throat> In 1 Peter 3, 8, it says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers and be tenderhearted and be courteous. Cur courteous. Kind people are always courteous and polite. We can read how love is given by acts of kindness, but what John the Apostle said in the following scripture. In 1 John 3.16, it says, By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let it not love... <clears throat> Let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. So again, in First John, we can see that a kind person will do awesome stuff for God. They will love. They will lay down their life for the brethren. There is one story in the Bible that gives a glimpse of what an act of kindness does, and that is the story of Ruth. You, you guys, anybody remember the story of Ruth in the Bible? I'm just going to share with you. Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, had lost her husband 10 years earlier, and then Ruth also lost her husband as well as her sister-in-law. So her mother-in-law had nothing to live for anymore and decided to go back to her homeland in Judah. Ruth wanted to follow as well as her sister-in-law, but Naomi did not want them because she could not see the necessity. So here is the mother-in-law. She's lost everything, and she decides to leave. And uh, the two, the two husbands, to her two. Uh, uh, in laws, they passed away, her two sons, right? And so, uh, and so Neo, uh, <clears throat> Naomi is planning on leaving, and Ruth wants to follow. And uh, Naomi doesn't want her because she says she doesn't know the need, to see the need. But Ruth refused to give up on Naomi. See, that's the act of kindness that we need to focus on. But Ruth refused to give up on Naomi as she saw her mother-in-law's despair. And so she said the following. But Ruth replied, this is in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. But Ruth replied, Do not persuade me to leave you or to go back and not follow you. For wherever you go... I will go, and wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May Yahweh punish me and do so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. Can you see the act of kindness in Ruth? She was ready to leave everything, her future. She was ready to leave her future, but to be there to be supportive to her ex-mother-in-law. And that is an awesome act of kindness. <clears throat> so Ruth takes a chance even though she could lose everything and not able to remarry again. But when she gets in Naomi's homeland, she finds a kindness from God and gets married to a rich man called Boaz, which is the family <clears throat> redeemer. 
Before Ruth got married, she was also amazed at the kindness she had also received from him. All in all, what I've noticed in that too, as Ruth put herself beside and decided to go and follow her mother-in-law, ex-mother-in-law, with her acts of kindness, God saw that. And see, the thing is, when we're kind to people, we benefit the re uh, sowing and reaping benefits that comes with fall. And that's what literally happened to, to, to Ruth. See, Ruth gained even more. She gained an, an, an awesome husband, and she gained, she gained like everything. Why? Because she decided to be kind and to, to be there for somebody that needed her. May we all do the same. She said, <clears throat> 10, it says, She bowed her face to the ground and said to him, speaking to Boaz, okay, Why are you so kind to notice me, although I am a foreigner? And so Boaz answered her, Everything you have done for your mother-in-law since your husband's death has been fully reported to me. How you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and now you came to the people you didn't previously know. May the Lord reward you for what you have done, and may you receive a full reward from the Lord God of Israel. Under those wings you have come for refuge. My Lord, she said, you have been so kind to me, for you have comforted me and encouraged your slave, although I am not like one of your female servants. Can you see the hand of God in there? Yeah. All because Ruth decided to be kind and to leave her life, sacrifice her life, and be there for somebody that need, was in need. And that's what God expects when Paul the Apostle wrote the letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. When he, when he wrote, love is patient, love is kind, when he put that in print, he said, love is kind, this is what he meant. This is literally what he meant. All these things should show, <clears throat> should, show should be the life of a believer, a kind person. And so showing kindness will always bring kindness to other, from others. As I conclude about the subject of what kindness is like, let me read from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. In Romans 12, 15, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. And do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is exactly how love is demonstrated to acts of kindness. It says, weep with those who weep, like I said earlier. Meaning we should be there for hurting people and not put ourselves in, and to learn to put ourselves in their shoes. Know this, I've noticed this, hurting people will hurt people. And we're not in their shoes. And we're having walked, walked their life. And our part as believers is to be kind to them, even if they're not kind to us. And that's what God expected when he spoke through the Apostle Paul, as he wrote and penned 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And so this is exactly what Ruth did. She felt her mother-in-law's pain and refused to go back home feeling abandoned and alone. She saw her feeling abandoned and alone if she would not go. And we must do the same. We must learn to put ourselves in other people's shoes and to do extra acts of kindness. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat>